For TV News on the R, I am Omotayo Alo. The federal government has filed fresh charges against former National Security Advisor, retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki, at the Federal High Court in Abuja. The five amended charges bother on money laundry and illegal possession of firearms amongst all the prosecution. Counsel to the petitioner Shuhaibu Labarun prayed the court to allow witnesses to wear masks in order to shield their identities, but the defense team led by Joseph Daudu opposed the application. He however sought the court's permission for his client to be allowed to travel within and outside the country during the trial. Trial Judge Justice Adimola Dini has shadowed ruling on the matter for Wednesday. A freedom to move around within and out of the country. So those are things. The ruling will be given on Wednesday. Thank I'll you. prepare the defense for the new charge now. You know, we are yet to study it. It was read today. Previous state chapter of the All Progressives Congress has expressed shock over the People's Democratic Party condemnation on the Nigerian judiciary following the recent court pronouncement that appeared not to favor the PDP and their candidate at the various election petition tribunals, especially the Aquibum State and River State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal. In what is an unfolding event, the PDP National Working Committee, National Publicity Secretary Chief Ulisa Metu, and the various chapters of the PDP in Rivers and Aquivum State have already trimmed their every caution in the rule book to the wind in the way they are casting aspersions on the integrity of respected members of the bench, whose only offense is that their meticulous and balanced judgment have exposed PDP's fraudulent and violent escapades during the 2015 general election. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, and Governor Nisim Wiki of River State have launched tries on the judiciary moment after the state governorship election ruled that uh, the tribunal sack Wiki as River State Governor. The tribunal had said the election that brought the governor to power was characterized by malpractice and not held in substantial compliance with the electoral laws. The party has declared that the judgment cannot stand while we gave branded it as a gang up against the people of River State. PDP's National Publicity Secretary Ulisa Metu slammed the verdict as completely bizarre and unacceptable. Meanwhile, the administrator of the PDP's Governor's Forum, Osaro Onahiwu, has confirmed that the opposition governors had called for an emergency meeting this Friday. He said, yes, it is true that the PDP governors have called an emergency meeting, which is held in for Friday, to discuss the judgment and take a joint position on them. 40-year-old Prince Adeyeye Enito Ogunwusi has emerged as the new Oni of Ife. The Oshun State Government announced its appointment in a press in a press brief signed by the Secretary to the State Government, Moshud Adoti. The statement revealed that the choice of the new Oni from the Gessi ruling house of Ileife, State of Oshun, follows the completion of the due process by the Kingmakers. The new Oni is a higher national diploma graduate from the Polytechnic Ibadan and a member of several professional bodies including the Institute of Chartered Accountant of Nigeria, an associate accountant technician and a certified member of the Institute of Directors Nigeria as well as a global real estate institute. Some opinions have it that a less technical education is prioritized in the country. Nigeria's quest for technological advancement and scientific background, as well as a vision 2020, may not be achieved. This formed the core point of major speakers at an education summit in Oshun. States pointing out the need to introduce the Bachelor of Technology degrees in the polytechnic system to equate its status with the universities and give it more relevance. Rashid Rashid has more from Ibajo in Ocean State. The report. Traditional rulers, academics from various tertiary institutions across Ocean State, students, politicians, the registrar and chief executive officer of JAM, Debo Ojedro, former Gabna of Kano State, Senator Rabi Musa Kwankwazo, and Gabna Rauf Arabashala of Oshun State are all gathered under the stamp. They are here to deliberate on how to reposition the polytechnic education and bring it at par with the university education in Nigeria.
fortunately, like I said, application of candidates into polytechnics has been dwindling in, year in, year out. It's unfortunate because we are paying leave service. Look, if we are now paying leave service to polytechnic education, my God, we are deceiving ourselves. If you want to reach where other nations are, we need to de develop our polytechnic education. The speakers who laid emphasis on the introduction of more technical and vocational education at the polytechnics, regular training of lecturers for optimal performance, also advocated for the introduction of Bachelor of Technology degrees, BTEC, in all polytechnics to help bridge the wide disparity gap. Sincerely, technical education is the answer. Technical education will help us. It will provide education. It will develop us uh, technologically. Uh, the issue of uh, CBT, I want to say, is also a way of developing us technologically. And um, if we want to develop, want to be like other countries, we just have to face the truth. We can never live where we never saw. The polytechnics in Britain were the ones that we inherited. They were offering HND, ND, and things like that. So, as our colonial masters, they introduced it to us. But since then, they have changed, and we refuse to change. That the host, Governor Rauf Aragbashala, and former Kano State Governor, Senator Rabi Musa Kwakwazo, the degree attained at the end of either the university or polytechnic education should not be the determinant of one's future. So I deliberately chose to go to the polytechnic. It was not a mistake on my own part. It was a mistake. But the truth is, whatever was the basis of your choice, it was not be an apartheid on your neck. Don't wait for BTEC. Don't wait because it might never come in Nigeria. Don't wait, don't wait. No, the dream of B Tech has been there since when I was there. Nigeria okay, will tell you. We were the first set of Nigerian students that protested discrimination against polytechnic education. They take your destiny in your hands. My conclusion, as somebody who has gone through the craft school, technical school, polytechnics and universities, is that I think we need to do some attitudinal change within ourselves. We are different people. Even people from this town are different in many ways. It doesn't matter. So many people have succeeded without going to university or polytechnic. It doesn't matter. Those who can go to university can go to university. That's fine. Somebody has to go to university. The theme for this year's Education Summit is Polytechnic Education, Relevance and Prospect. We'll be back with more stories after the break. Stay with us. Is it what, 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 what crazy? Or talk crazy? Or what type of crazy is that? Except crazy. News making the headlines. Black Maria is to, is to carry criminals. Today. Sometimes it gets confrontational. Slap you in the face. Even they don't put words into my mouth. Whatever it is, that will bring our ministry to the support. I said to help On Cold Digest. I want to know why I should be believing them. Every weekday, we bring all of these together and take them to the court of public opinion. Everybody has your right in Nigeria. Where you are the judge. Welcome, if you're just joining us as Core TV News on the R. For more of our news and information, visit our social media platform, facebook.com forward slash Core TV News, our Twitter handle at Core TV News NG. You could get more on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Core TV, River Space and News. In view of the need for various tribes residing outside their stage of origin to identify with the leadership of where they reside, the Yoruba community in Plato State paid a costly visit to the Plato State Government House to assure it of their honor lord support. Our correspondent has details. The Yoruba community.
Committee of Clutter State, who went to the government's house to pledge their loyalty, were received by the Secretary to the State Government, Rufus Pature, who assured them of safety and determination of government to run an all-inclusive administration to enable citizens contribute their quotas. When we were going out during the campaigns, we were around about 54, 56 tribal organizations and associations. And our emphasis has been this bottom-up approach. And therefore, I want to assure you that in anything we are going to do, consultations will be made with this group. And hopefully by next week, His Excellency is going to inaugurate the Elders Council on the plateau to which one of you will be nominated to participate in the governance of Plato. The President General of the Plato Yoruba community, Bankole Folade, maintains a visit is to express the loyalty to the present administration and charges the Lalong led government on good governance. We want to thank God for your time, for being willing to be appointed as the Secretary to the government of Plato State. Uh, we know the importance of uh, the Secretary to Government. The, in fact, the accusation rests squarely on those women. The Secretary to the State Government, who expressed gratitude at their support for the present administration, also commended the Yoruba community in the state for being agents of peace and unity. And honestly, if there is anything that the people of Plato should thank the Yoruba for, is the way and manner you have helped to achieve the peace that we are enjoying on the planet. Your efforts in propagating religion, both Christian and uh, Muslim, and in all other areas of endeavor, you have proved your world on the planet. That I say to you. With this visit, the Plata community is optimistic of an administration devoid of violence and rancor. The snake invasion of some played to communities in Kanke, Pankishi and Langtan South and North Local Government Council this year has reached an alarming rate as the medical centers in those communities have run out of drugs. Our correspondent has details in this report. Some of the common snakes found in the infested areas include carpet vipers, puff adders and pythons. At a visit of our crew at Miko Memorial Clinic in Ampel, Kanke local government area, five victims were still on admission, while 20 had been discharged. Most of the victims said they were beaten by the snakes while on their thumbs. Secretary of Kanke local government council said most of the victims chose to seek traditional help, thereby making it difficult to ascertain the actual number of affected people. We are going to do our best to see how we can collaborate, we can come in so that where there are lapses, we will try to, you know, cover up so that together we would make our communities. At Comprehensive Health Center, Zamko Langtang North, several victims were found on admission at the female and male wards as well as the pediatric unit. Assistant Superintendent of the Health Center, Dr. Jilly Damden, said that last week, all beds in the hospital were occupied by snake bitten victims. At the point they were giving it free to patients. Mm. But when that one got exhausted, uh, the hospital now had to liaise to see how they could die. So the major challenge most of the patients do have is the issue of the cost. Yes, cost. Immediately you come, whether you pay or you don't pay, yes. they just give you the status. But in an event where you do not close, we expect you to deposit something before we give. So some people, because of lack of funds, they may have to stay one, two, three, four days without being able to secure or to purchase that snake venom. So those are the things that may eventually lead to either complications or even mortality. We agree that there is a little upsurge in the cases. Local governments, authorities, should begin to conscientize our people. Since the area is endemic with snakes, go to your farms, wooden boots, cut grasses around your compound and around your farms. Ensure that you just buy gloves and use. It is expected the government and relevant agencies will make these communities safer for residents. 
Bode Sadu Lor Jaba Road is a federal link road to most northern states in the country. What makes it significant is its threat to the lives of indigents and motorists who plow the 26 kilometer route. A 30 minutes journey lasts for days or may never end for some who have lost their lives on the road. The affected in the area have appealed to the federal government to speed up reconstruction of the bad portions of the road and help save the lives of those still surviving. Rashid Rashid thinks it's true of the experience of the affected. Bodesa due to Jebba Road is located within Moro local government area of Kwara North. This road happens to be one of the federal access roads begging for rehabilitation. The experience of motorists, especially heavy-duty vehicle drivers on the 26-kilometer highway portion of the road has been one described as hell on earth with the daredevil traffic gridlock. Vehicles take turns to maneuver the bad portion of the road to avoid a fall like some unlucky motorist who fell victim of a great fall by the roadside. Narrating his ordeal on the road in question, this driver says he has spent four days on the road on an occasion when he got stuck due to the bad road. Uh, I'll be here someone that's on Sunday now. But now we don't do here now, no we no going, no coming. So we don't know what to do now. Maybe you people can try to tell or God Buari she help you here for, for this road. But we don't tire. Despite the huge risk involved, some of these drivers scooped fuel from one of the falling trucks carrying fuel to one of the northern states. On what has been the effects of bad roads to the economy, the Secretary of Jebba Council of Indigents laments that most of the citizens find it difficult traveling home, as some of the programs and activities of the community has been either cancelled or postponed due to the hindrance posed on traveling. Honestly, it is very disastrous, sir. Uh, if you see, I am coming all the way from Iloni with a commercial car. From getting to Bodhisattva, I have to get down and take my bike and call for bike. Honestly, from Bodhisattva to Jeba, it takes me seven hours. You can imagine where we normally fly just for 30 minutes. I am coming from, from Iloni, get to Bodhisattva, I find it very difficult to pass. The deputy speaker of Kwara State House of Assembly, who is an indigenous of Jeba, explained that several letters have been written to appropriate authorities on the deplorable condition of the road with no response. He, however, made a plea to President Muhammad Buhari to effect the quick repair of the road. People are dying. People, uh, people are delayed on that road. Many things are happening on that road. Killing of people. Market are paralyzed. Trailer on the road for many days. So I'm now seeing this appointment to appeal to the president to please come to our rescue. This road is not for all the people in Kwara here, it's for all the people who are passing this road every, uh, every day, it's a million. While the drivers claimed to have been losing economically, the indigents lament loss of lives of their loved ones while applying the road and called for an urgent intervention to prevent further loss. Rashid Rashid, Court TV News, Jeba, Kwara State. A normal activities will today return to the nation's sport as Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria, MWN, have suspended its two-day strike. In a communique signed on Saturday in Lagos, the President General of MWUN, Anthony Intet, said the agreement was reached after a meeting between representatives of NPA and MWUN. It said all outstanding payment to tally clerks and onboard security men are uh, top priorities that would be paid as soon as the Treasury's single account TSA issues were resolved. We take another break and we'll be back with stories from outside Nigeria. Stay with us. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News. A 24-hour news station. 
And on the foreign scene, five people have died after a whale watching boat with 27 people on board sank off Vancouver Island in Canada. Canadian authorities said the vessel made a distress call late on Sunday afternoon, disclosing that the boat was partially submerged 12 nautical kilometers west of Tofino. British Columbia and Corona spokeswoman Barb McClotok also confirmed that five persons have died so far and 18 people have been taken to the hospital. Tofino's mayor described the mood in the town as tense but commended residents for their aid in the rescue effort. The Supreme Court in Saudi Arabia has confirmed the vet sentence against Shai Cleric and the leader of the government protest, Sheikh Nima Nima. After the confirmation of Sheikh Nima's vet sentence by the Court of Appeal and then the Supreme Court, one of his brothers, Mohammed Al Nimron, said his life is in the hands of King Salam, who can endorse the sentence or suspend the execution. He, however, one that his brother's execution could provoke reactions, adding that Sheikh Nima had supporters in the Shah areas of the Islamic world. Mohammed Al Nima further disclosed that he expects the king to prove his wisdom by halting the execution of his brother and six other Shah people. And now in the world of sport, Ashton Villa have sacked manager Team Sherwood after eight months in charge with the club ninth tint in the Premier League table. The move follows a 2-1 defeat by Swansea on Saturday, Villa's sixth straight loss in the league. The club serve in a statement the board believes the results on the pitch were simply not good enough and that a change is imperative. Under-21 manager Kevin McDonald has been placed in interim charge. Appointed in February, Sherwood shared the FA Cup final and led the club to a 17th place finish in his first season in charge, but he has won one of 10 league matches this term. Villa have not won since the opening day and are four points from safety. And it's a wrap on Core TV News at this hour. Thank you so very much for joining us. I am Omotayo Alo.